When a stallion is considered one of the best progeny of a great horse, such as So You Think, who was twice runner-up champion Australian sire and third in the most recent sires list for the season just finished, you know that stallion is bound for success. D'Argento is that horse, a Rose Hill Guineas winner and prolific Group 1 competitor. He had 13 two-year-old runners for four winners in his first crop. And as they turn three, we know there are plenty of expectations ahead for their classic season. It's a bit of a blowy old day up here, but what a magnificent property. And it is so exciting to see this gorgeous son of So You Think in D'Argento. He's like, he's like a silver brumby. He's gleaming in the middle of winter. Yes, no, th nice to see you, Caroline. And he's uh, really put on some weight now and, and let down beautifully. And yeah, he's, he's enjoying his off time and it's nearly time to, to get back into it for him. Yeah, and it's been so wonderful to see what he's done already as a stallion with, you know, three horses coming out winning on debut. We'll talk a little bit more about them shortly, but tell us about your management of him. I mean, I'm quite intrigued. He has his gelding mate in there and, and, and they're the best of mates. Yes, you know, it's just nice to keep him relaxed as, as we can in the off-season and he can just be a horse and, and not have to have the stresses of stable life or anything. And the gelding just seems to be a nice compliment, like compliments him out in the paddock. He... He knows he's there. He doesn't always stay with him, but he, he just a little security blanket. Well, he's got quite the personality, doesn't he? I mean, this this whole sire line through Sadler's Wells, High Chaparral, so you think, into D'Argento, and he was such a popular racehorse with Star Thoroughbreds, and he's he's a sort of horse that, you know, as a stallion, you can see the personality. Oh, absolutely. Like, he, they're all big kids, the stallions, I find, and, <laughs> and uh, he's a really lovely horse to handle, but he's also got that energetic side, and... He's, uh, he's great, like he's been very good to deal with. And it's a really historic start, isn't it? John and his family and Joss, your wife and, and yourself now and kids. You know, it's, it's a generational property that's, you know, bred some wonderful horses over the years in this, this area, sort of southwestern New South Wales near Young. Yes, it's, it's been going for a long time now and John's done an amazing job setting the foundations for Boness and, and been teaching Joss and I the, the straps that's been probably 20 years where I've been working with John now and it's hard to believe how quickly it's gone but the, the way it's all travelled through and John's now like taking a bit of a step back still and his own he's still enjoying, <laughs> he's still enjoying the horses. It's great to be able to carry on with that foundation that's been set. D'Argento adds to some great stallions you've had over the years and he was a ripper. He won twice at two. The Rose Hill Guineas was just such an exciting win uh, for Denise and the star team. Fourth in a Doncaster, another great run and then the big races, second in an Epsom to Hartnell by a whisker. Third in the Wink Stakes, two Winks, the great Winks herself. Uh, and you know, he is the sort of horse that you need to be reminded of that turn of foot, particularly late in those races. Oh, it's, it, he was a phenomenal, phenomenal horse and he raced against some of the best horses that we've seen ever. It does is something you have to remind yourself of when you're even dealing with him day to day, but uh, now seeing it coming through in his progeny, uh, it's, yeah, it's something you have to think about and we're very lucky to have him. Elegant to Empress, the outside, and Rag Queen through the centre. When you look at what he's done, as I said, those, those you know, first start winners, three of them already, considering he's a Rose Hill Guineas, you know, he's more of a, you know, you would expect being by the great, so you think, more of a, a middle distance sort of sire. But already, you know, Rag Queen, uh, one at Canterbury, third in the $2 million English Millennium, Silver and Suave, second in the Ken Russell Memorial, bitten by Barry, one on debut at Newcastle, Duke Calzini beat Switzerland, first trial at Warwick Farm and is now a winner and has raced in stakes grade. That's pretty amazing. Two-year-olds, these are two-year-olds, not three-year-olds, isn't it? We have to pinch ourselves to think how it's all started off for him and um, we didn't expect it to come so soon. The horses have really done everything that they've been asked of them and uh, Rag Queen to win on debut at Canterbury for, for David Payne was amazing. We, big thrill for us and big congratulations to him because it was a, a job well done there. It's a testament to the versatility of the sideline. They really do have that turn of foot like he did and they've shown it at a young age which 
I think it'll stand in good stead when they get a bit older. But you know that the best is yet to come, the three-year-old, the classics, guineas, Oaks derbies, you know, and all those incredible mile and a quarter middle distance races, yeah. they just seem absolutely primed for those this season. It really opens up and, and these sort of horses that have had that early experience and been looked after by the trainers, mm. that some of the trainers have really done a great job with them, Daniel Sieb, David Payne, uh, now in with Gerald and Sterling, they've really looked after them and I think now it's just going to open up for them as they get over the distance and learn their trade and start to step them through the, the grades. His sire, so you think, we know he's probably one of the most popular racehorses and stallions around, but the last two years he's been runner-up champion Australian sire. Yeah. And so that bodes so well for D'Argento as one of very few of his sons at stud. So you think kicked off with one winner in, his, in the first two-year-old season. Um, D'Argento has had four, so he thinks, I think he had four, six, maybe six winners on a day a few yeah. years ago um, in, the, in the top echelon of racing mm -hmm. and they've just stepped up and, and continue to as, as they go through to three, four, five, six-year-olds. It's mm -hmm. um, very exciting to see what happens. And $16,500, so you've kept him at that. I mean, this region, it's such an easy region to get to. It's, it's a really prime part of the, the New South Wales thoroughbred family, I guess. That fee is so generous for mare owners to be able to access a stallion like this. Well, it's a tough one with the service fee because you, want, you have to offer value. I'm very aware that a lot of expenses go into it for everyone. And, but with horses that can race on from two, three, four, and hopefully opens up that big prize money that can come later on, hopefully there's some big value there for people. And obviously the yearlings now, off the back of some of those early results, selling for up to $300,000, that's a great result in anyone's book. Yeah, up to eight times his service fee mm. in that instance, and uh, horses in book two making 200000 It's a huge testament to the types he can throw and the strength and then the early runners, which has all, all helped. But, um, yeah, that's it's been a, a great start. Mm. And we're on the cusp of a new racing season, so that's exciting for everyone involved. We've seen what they've done at two, but this is the really exciting time, isn't it, as, they, as they're rising three? Yeah, absolutely, and we can't wait to see what he can do with his three-year-olds and, and having the new two-year-old crop coming through as well. There's been some good talk about the ones that have been broken in this season as well. So looking forward to it and very excited, yeah.